Hi, my name is Doug Milford with Lamna Valley, and in this video we'll be doing a quick Hello World program. To start, go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. I'm going to close down all initial windows as we don't really need them. First thing we'll need to do is create a folder somewhere for our application code to live. It doesn't really matter where. It could be a folder on your desktop, or if you have a source folder for your projects, you can put it there. Whatever location works for you. Since I'm not going to keep this project around after the video, I'm just going to create a new Hello World folder in my C temp location. I can right click and create a new folder and name it Hello World. Go ahead and select that new folder. Oh, I guess it reopened the welcome tab. I'll close that back up. You now currently have a blank slate. No files or folders but it is the start of your project. Note, there's a different way we could have done a new project, and that's by using the command line and typing cargo new. That would have created the shell of a minimum project with all the necessary minimum files and folders. But I wanted to do this manually so that I could briefly touch upon certain topics as we go. It's not a lot of work to do manually, and it gives me a chance to discuss some basic things. Okay, enough jibber jabber. Let's create a file called cargo.toml. Right click in the empty space of the blank section on the left hand panel and select new file. Casing matters as this file is expected by the compiler, so make sure you capitalize the C. Everything else is lowercase. This will contain some basic information about the application, as well as other things such as external dependencies needed for the application to run. At the top we're going to have some basic package information. Type package surrounded by square brackets. We need to give it a name and a starting version. It's convention to start your version at 0.1.0 and then following standard semantic versioning after that. Those two pieces are really the only required ones for the cargo.toml file. However, I'm going to add just two more. One for authors so that you and your team can get credit for your work. You should specify the author's name, and if you like, put their email address in angular brackets. I'm currently putting in myself as an author, but you can add multiple authors if you like. Just follow the pattern. The last entry is going to be addition, which I'll set to 2018. Addition isn't really referring to the addition year of your own code. It's referring to what compiler to use for building your application. 2018 is the latest, so I'm using that. If you typed in 2019, which is the year of this video, it won't work because one doesn't exist for that year. If you don't specify an addition, it will simply just use 2015. In later videos, we'll talk about adding external dependencies. For our hello world though, we won't need any. Let's go ahead and save that. If you want more information about cargo.toml, you can visit this URL. Okay, let's go ahead and create a source folder for your actual code. Right click on the blank part of the left hand panel and select new folder. Name it SRC. This naming convention in Rust is used by the compiler to know where your source code is. Now let's add a file called main.rs. Right click on the new source folder and click new file. Again, casing is important, but in this situation, everything is lowercase. If this is your very first Rust application, you may see a message in the bottom right hand corner of the screen saying RLS has not been installed. If you see that, go ahead and agree to install it. It should only take a few seconds. Okay, let's get to some coding. Rust expects that there's a main function in the main.rs file. It's pretty straightforward. It begins with fn, indicating it's a function, with the name of main. The parentheses indicate there are no parameters. And to finish off the hello world, all we have to do is print to the command line, which is print ln exclamation point, and in parentheses put hello world, and the line with the semicolon. Make sure you save the file. To build and run your application, you now need to open up a new terminal. In the main menu on top of the screen, you have a terminal menu item. Select that and then new terminal. A new terminal will be created at the bottom of your screen. Once open, you can type cargo build. Cargo is the command that automates compiling of your project so that you don't have to do a bunch of manual steps. Here we get some green messages indicating it's compiling just fine. 
To actually run it, we can type cargo run. And here you see the message we printed out. We've successfully done our first hello world. If I change the file and type cargo run again, it'll rebuild automatically, so you don't have to retype cargo build. You may have noticed on the left hand panel there are more files and folders than the ones we created. One is the cargo.log file. This file is auto generated and is not meant for you to monkey with, so just leave it alone. The other is the target folder with some more stuff in it. This is where your compiled code gets placed when you build it. Again, it's not really meant for you to monkey with, so just leave it alone. I want to show you what it looks like if you had an error. Immediately, a red squiggly will appear. Hovering your mouse over it will give you more information. In addition, if you type cargo build, that too will give you detailed information. Here it's clearly telling you it cannot find fake function. One of the major strengths of Rust is its fantastic compiler. It will help you out tremendously as you develop. If you revert the changes, it will once again compile and run. Hello World programs don't really give you a great sense of what a language is capable of. Printing to a command line is neither sexy nor very useful. It's really only to confirm you can at least run a program. We'll be getting into some more interesting stuff in later videos, including 3D graphics and a browser. So I hope you'll join me to see where Rust really shines. Once again, my name is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley, and I look forward to seeing you next time.